Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and I'm excited today to be unboxing this Kickstarter product called Legends Untold. This has and includes the Weeping Caves Nova set, the Great Sewers Nova set, the Alchemist Novus Booster, the Treasure Novus Booster, and the Druid Novus Booster, as well as some Dragon Dice to go along with it. So we are going to go through all of the packages you're seeing here in front of you and I do want to let you guys know that there is another Kickstarter coming for this particular product later this year. So you're going to want to keep your eyes open for that. If this is something that interests you, you'll have another chance to pick it up later on in the year and there will likely be additional content coming to add into this particular set. So without further ado, we'll wipe away all the add-ons and we'll focus on one of these two core sets to start. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Weeping Caves and again, this particular product is coming from Inspiring Games. How about we flip this particular set over on its back, read a little bit more about what it's all about, and then we're going to open this thing up and find out what type of components are inside. Your people, the Saks, have been driven out of their lands by the invasion of the newcomers. Forced into retreat by these heavily armored elves and their powerful magic, you have managed to save those that you can and gather them on the outskirts of the mighty city of Dun Mordhain. In Legends Untold, one to four players take on the role of unlikely heroes, the final hope of a conquered people. Starting with only your wits and a crude weapon, you will explore the Weeping Caves trying to gain access to the great city of Dun Mordhain. Inspired by adventure books, RPGs, and fantasy board games, Legend Untold offers a deep adventuring experience that sets up in five minutes, has no player downtime, and you can finish in an hour. Legends Untold can be played with up to eight players provided you have two core sets. Let's go ahead and dive into the box and find out what it has in store for us. The very first book you're going to be greeted with when you open up Legends Untold The Weeping Caves is the book for this particular scenario and cinematic campaign. It says right on the front of the book, just in case you weren't sure, if you have opened Legends Untold for the first time, you're going to start right here. So the first couple pages are going to do exactly that. They're going to get you used to how to play the game, how to use the book, the introductory walkthrough scenario, the cinematic campaign, the card almanac, and really walk you through that. So this is what you're going to want to follow if you're playing the game for the very first time. It's even got a divider about halfway through to get you right to how to play the Weeping Campaign or Weeping uh, Caves Cinematic Campaign right in the center. And then all the way to the very back of the book, it's got references on the cards. So you're going to see multiple pages where it's showing you all the different reference icons on each of the cards throughout. It's about 48 pages in length and has quite a bit of white space on pages. So don't be scared by that number count. It's actually not a daunting read overall. So that is the first book and it's called The Weeping Caves Book. Very good read for first timers. And then... You're going to jump right into the rule book itself. So this book, of course, is going to be important in actually learning the game. And you can see this particular book comes in at about 53 pages or so in this one. And there's other ways to play it. You can build your own adventure. You can play the game as an RPG. There's other ways to play this besides what the specified way is, the typical way that's mentioned inside of this rule book. And uh, the actual rule book, in difference to the one we just opened up, has a full table of contents. So you can easily find all the different areas of the book that you want to explore. You can see here we've got a welcome. So you can actually pause the screen if you want to read that, but essentially a welcome to Legends Untold. It probably specifies a lot of what we read on the back of the box already. And then we've got our component overview. We're going to see a lot of these cards in a few seconds as we go through the box. So you can ensure you've got everything you need. Talks about all the different tokens in the game, the dice, all that good stuff is labeled out here. So you're going to have rules, rules, rules to go through. So that is the rule book. Again, don't be daunted by either of these because this is a smaller box game. So this rule book might be, seem long, but if this was actually blown up to a regular size board game or average box size, you're probably talking 20 pages. Uh, it's probably at least half of what the page value is in these right now. So we move further on into some tokens here. Again, I'm not gonna be able to actually speak to what these tokens are just yet, but some of them are quite obvious. Some represent likely poison or fire. Some could represent gems you're finding within the game. Some are probably conditions. You've got a scout token here. So you've got this one punch board right here. 
And then on this right here, we have another one. It looks to be very similar, if not the same as the other one. I think there's one difference here with this token. Oh, well, there's a little bit of differences actually. Um, so yeah, on the opposite side, some of them actually flip from ones to twos and there's differences in a couple other spots, but for the most part, those are pretty much the same. And then we move into the actual middle of the box itself and the contents inside. So again, I have the Dragon Dice. It does come with four D6s. These are standard D6s to what you'd be used to in most uh, typical board games. But I don't think that the quality of these are going to be uh, jaw dropping, which is partly the reason why the Dragon Dice are so cool to pick up because they really give you a nice translucent or transparent look to your dice, which is cool. But these ones are just standard D6s. And then we move into some large player cards. You'll see there's actually a tray in here to keep things organized, which is nice. So let's go ahead and take the wrap off this and find out what these cards are all about. So here's a look at the cards. These ones are quite large, to be honest. So I'm gonna show you the artwork has changed from the original Kickstarter. So I believe there was some draft artwork that was kind of thrown up on the Kickstarter originally, but I can tell you right now, the artwork has been beefed up quite a bit since the original drafts were done and it looks really, really good. And you can see here we got like the Evicted Noble. We have a whole bunch of stats going on on this card. Of course, I won't be able to speak to much except the obvious, but we've got the Farm Hand here, Forge Hand. So these are all different potential playable characters would be my guess. We got the Student. Now I might be missing a couple that are hiding behind, but I think that's it actually. And it looks like, oh, look at that. So if you flip them over to the opposite side, you'll find the male version of the particular card. So you can go female or male on either side, which is cool. Allows you to kind of play both sides, which is great. And then we've got ourselves missing adventures. So these are probably heading into the actual uh, campaign or adventures. So there is probably spoilers type information if I go any further with these, but a whole bunch of these for scenarios. Then we get into some serious spoiler stuff. So I'm gonna keep things pretty simple here, but basically, without showing you every card in this deck because it's all about exploration and seeing things for yourself. Uh, this is essentially what one of the cards or location cards would look like. And you're gonna traverse throughout this area, building out the cards as you make decisions on which paths you wanna go, what things you're gonna encounter. You're gonna have to learn all the icons in order to understand that. And of course you start moving through the game. And I'm not gonna show you the rest because I don't wanna spoil too much, if anything at all, really. I just wanna show you roughly what you can expect to find inside the box. And then we've got things here at the very back which could potentially be reference cards yes they are and that's fantastic so we've got like a turn sequence card here showing you how the turns work flipping it over how to do combat that's great next up we've got a readiness card here which gives you some details on readiness flip that over to the other side Looks like the same thing, might be different. I might be missing something there. Tests, how to do basic tests and stage tests. This is all great stuff because you don't have to go back to the manual to find it. And of course, icons, super handy when you've got all those cards strewn it all over the place and you want to quickly reference something. So that's great. Love that they have those cards prepared and it looks like they've got all the most important ones ready to go. So this appears to be a really special scenario and I'm not gonna show you what's behind them except just the corners, but you can see there's some locations there. So I don't wanna show you those because I really don't want to ruin anything, but basically it's a scenario what looks to have actual locations specific to what you'll probably run into during this particular scenario, if that makes any sense. All right, it's time to go through the first large deck of cards here. We'll do this at a fairly quick pace. We got some loot cards to start. We've got an old wooden door, as you can see, it's got a good chunk of space there for the artwork, and then it goes into a very nice layout with the actual cards themselves, with some flavor text in there as well to give you a little bit of a feel as to what's going on in that scenario. Can't speak to too much of this, really, and how that all resolves, because there's different layouts for different types of cards, but I really do like the artwork on this one. I'm actually surprised at how much better this artwork looked than I originally thought when I saw the Kickstarter page the first time around. Uh, the artwork has jumped up a notch big time. I really like it. Because um, originally I believe some of the, main, especially the actual characters that you're using in the game, really looked void of any kind of major detail. Uh, that would kind of draw you into the world. But I can see now that these cards do just that. Uh, not only do the individuals or humans or non-humans in this game look great, but the locations also look interesting. Something I actually want to check out and find out what's going on in this world. So very, very good job on uh, 
upping the quality of things on that front. And the card layout is really nice and unique for this game. Uh, again, it's a, it's a different layout than I've seen on any other card game that I've dealt with. So I do like this quite a bit. You've got a whole bunch of enemies here we're gonna run into and stuff like that. So, and of course you got all kinds of loot because loot is good. You're gonna to wanna to find loot when you're underground and trying to survive. Got all kinds of maps and stuff they're gonna help you get through. Cards look absolutely beautiful. And on the back there's three cards that just are blank. I'm not sure exactly what those are for. But anyway, that is the first deck of cards. And there is one more in the bottom of the box. The last deck of cards in this box. I'll do a quick flip. We'll see the back here. I want to give you an idea as to what the backs of the cards look like too. So if you're trying to categorize things, these are the types of icons that are on the backs of the cards to help you get things in order. And then of course we flip this over and you can see this one here, Arcane Theory, uh, Helping Hands, Privileged, all kinds of different cards here. Who knows exactly what they're for just yet. Looks like they're tests actually from what I can tell here. Um, and then we've got different types. Maybe these are specific to hero abilities that you can potentially pick up in order to help you survive when you're using particular weapons. Looks pretty cool. Swords, bows, all kinds of stuff going on there. Ah, here we go. Now we're getting into like the actual weapons that you'll actually have if you, of course, get them. I don't know if you start off with a really useless weapon or not. You got some decent clothes. That's always good, but you can get better stuff out there as well. Some items. Lots of different types of items. You got events that can happen throughout the game that are gonna mess with you, of course. And then you've got more enemies that probably make up from the end of the last one we just went through and some different locations to throw in there. So for those interested, this right here is a pack of what's called Dragon Dice. These dice are see-through, which is extremely cool looking. And you can also see when you land sixes, you have a really special S there. That is a signature S on the end of Legends from the title. That is your six. Now again, I'm not 100% sure it might be a crit in this game. It might just be an overwhelming success. But if you land that, it's likely a really good thing, I would assume. But these dice are a major upgrade over the D6s that come inside the base game so if you have the opportunity to pick them up and you want to kind of have thematic dice this is definitely worth your while so let's go ahead and open this pack up i'll show you them up close and here's a look at these dragon dice up close and personal you can see the etchings on them are extremely clear and nice looking really like the dragon symbol it really pops off the die and i really like the fact it's super see-through like these things you can see the pips on the opposite side of the die straight through it looks really cool so it actually wouldn't be all that bad of an idea i kind of want to pick up another set to be honest i'm you may not need any more than four and that would probably be my guess is that to do the skill checks that you need four is probably enough but uh, after some play here I might uh, determine that I might need some more if that's the case I will go grab some more of these because they're certainly much more beautiful looking than the d6s that are standard in the box the next major set we're gonna open up right now is called the Great Sewers set. And we're gonna flip this box over on the back so we can find out more about what this one has for us before we go dive into the box. So the back of the box shows us that the actual narration right here is exactly the same as the previous one, except for a couple keywords like Great Sewers, which is exactly what the set is. It's been swapped out with because the same problem presents itself in the world. And remember, these are two different sets that basically thrust you into the action or the problems that are going on within the world from two different angles into the same story. But my guess would be is that the scenarios across both of them are different. The enemies are different. And obviously the locations you're actually going into to start are different. Different, but it gives you two different avenues to get into the world essentially. So for the purposes of the back of the box, very similar, except of course the look and feel of everything you're seeing on the right here. Now let's go ahead and open this thing up and see for ourselves. Once you've got the box lit off for the Great Sewers, you're going to run into the exact same type of book as we did in the previous one, except this is going to be tailored for the Great Sewers. So this is still going to be the book that you are going to want to walk through if you're playing this particular set for the first time, and it'll have all the specific information. Some of this may be similar to what's in the other one, but not all of it, because there's actual episodes of cinematic campaigns in here. There's different people potentially you're going to see, and you can see the actual Sewers campaign 
main logbook similar to the other one is in here as well so there are going to be differences so don't assume that they're going to be identical the layout will likely be identical but that's probably about it then you're going to move into the rule book this should be identical between the two different ones so if you've read one you should be able to run through the other with ease and then of course you've got some more tokens and these tokens should be shared in terms of the same style and look i don't think there will be too much of a difference between these ones and the other ones one thing i am noticing though is there's guard on this one i noticed scout last time i'm pretty sure guard was there in the last box and i just didn't realize it uh, and if i flip this over yes it is guard or scout on both sides and we move now into the box with this particular set, same thing. You're gonna see the D6s right here. You're gonna see another scenario that's likely a Kickstarter exclusive one. This one says right here, thanks for buying the game. Please find two cards we have added in post-production, which are amended versions of the cards in this box. So the other thing too is in the last box that I opened up, the ones that were in a pack may have been amendments to cards that needed to be changed. So I'll have to double check. This one actually has a sticker telling me that the other one didn't. So I'll have to determine whether or not the other one is additional content or something to be replaced out but either way this is really awesome that they caught the things that need to be corrected and included them in the box big kudos to them for doing that most times those errors get out before something can actually be done and this shows that they're on top of it from the get-go We've got ourselves a big deck of cards to go through and you can see the characters are already different so in this particular pack, we've got the Performer, and of course we have the male version and the female version on all of these cards. We have the Follower, and the male version of the Follower on the opposite side. We have the Gutter Snipe, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly or saying it correctly. And then we have the Laborer and both sides of that as well. So again, I'm not gonna show you guys all the different uh, sewer map tiles because I really don't wanna ruin anything. I might show you one or two. This is basically the look and feel of those particular cards. You get a rough idea. Of course, the really cool ones are probably way deeper in as you go further in and explore. It opens up a whole thing. I'll go right past all of this stuff and get right to the reference cards at the back here. So we've got the same types of reference cards, or I shouldn't say reference cards. These are actually the scenario cards that are specific to this box. So these should be very, very different. You can see here we've got rat infestation. So yes, they're tailored right for the sewers. So you've got all of these scenario sheets that you can go ahead and try to tackle. And then you've got your actual reference cards, which should be the same as the ones we saw from the other box as well. On the back side of these, this is interesting. There's actually some other content that is worth looking at just to show you guys, but I won't do that for every single card, just in case there's any major spoilers there. I'm really interested to see what these two decks of cards have for us. So I'm gonna go ahead now. We'll start with the one on the left and we'll go from there. So here is the first set of cards, or at least first pack of cards. So I'll just go through these so you guys can get a rough idea of what they look like in this particular set. Likely to see quite a bit of differences between this one and the other one. Got some of those cards. Now these cards look somewhat similar. Could be wrong about that, but some of them might be the same. And then we get into some of the actual weapons. Worn Axe, Rough Bow, some weapons, some clothes, of course. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. So I think some of these are different. Yeah, the performers that clothes and stuff like that. So yes, these are different. Um, the lock pick, glue, pole, Icon, water skin, then we get into events. So things are gonna pop up, things in the sewers that are gonna likely cause us grief that we're gonna have to deal with. And then we get into some of the actual cards we're gonna find in the sewers, which likely are not going to be the best. This is actually a really good way to open these two packs because now we're leading straight into this deck right here behind us. All right, so we got Water Pit, The Wooden Door, Skeletons, Bloated Corpse, all kinds of wonderful things. Hidden caches, hidden holes, mists of despair, outposts, walls, sealed doorways, all kinds of things you're not going to want to really find when you're in the sewers, to be totally honest with you. Um, some of those you actually might want to find because it's probably a way out. That, that wouldn't be bad. But you can see here we're getting into actual specific enemies, things like that. They're going to pop up that are from the sewers. Man, try that's not good. Don't want to be hitting trip walls. Oh my gosh, we got all kinds of really beastly and massively scary looking creatures we're gonna run into when we're in this uh, swamp area. So those are some, oh wow, some of those are extremely tough looking. 
And then we've got some loot here because we're going to probably need it based on all the things we just uh, witnessed. And we've got the Triton, some more maps. I imagine those maps are going to really help you get around. you got keys. That sounds like something you're going to need to get out. Tusk. Wow, that's really cool. So that is that deck of cards. So these are the three packs of cards that I'm talking about. We have the Alchemist, Treasure, and the Druid. We'll start with the Alchemist. We'll remove these other two out of the way. If you flip it over on the back side, you have to understand, first off, these are expansions. So it'll tell you right off the bat to stop. To implement any of these three different expansions into the game, you're going to have to ensure that you already own either the Weeping Caves or the Great Sewers. One of those two boxes I just showed you, you can't make use of these expansions on their own, which is what this stop thing is on the back of the bag. And it says right here, the alchemist with her unparalleled knowledge of herbology, travel far and wide across this particular land to gather the herbs and plants they need to brew powerful potions. And the novices amongst the Archeans are known as gardeners as they tend the great gardens of Achaea, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This pack gives you a first glimpse of resource gathering and item creation in Legends Untold. Gather herbs and brew potions on your adventures as you seek entry to the great city. That's really cool. So this is something that's literally a brand new mechanic being added in, not just more gameplay, more of the same. So let's go ahead, open this up and find out exactly what we've got. So after opening up the bag, we got the gardener. We actually have a new character, as mentioned, male or female you can use, which is pretty cool. We also have a new scenario called Hunt for Herbs. And if you flip this thing over to the opposite side, you have a second scenario, time for a brew or two. So those are the two different scenarios that come in this pack. Then we also have some new cards that managed to squeak their way into this one here, like the uh, Tinkerer card here, the Pocketed Smock. We got Herbalism Pack, Lion Strength. So these are different things we're going to use, I guess, in herbs to actually make things. So that's pretty awesome. Very awesome indeed. They look extremely cool. The artwork looks good. I like it. like it a lot. And it's just something totally new to the game. So Bog Moss, we got some Clovers, all kinds of different herbs in here we can work with. Very interesting. That's going to be cool to see what we can actually put together using that. This next one is called the Druid, and when I flipped it over, I actually noticed that there's a pack of card again thanking me for picking the game up and says, please find four cards we have added in post-production, which are amended versions of cards in this box. Now, I don't know, maybe those are the cards that go to the Weeping Cave set that I was missing inside. The one easy way to distinguish this is taking a look at the bottom left-hand corner. You can see that the cards have kind of a, a notation as to which box set they're from, so I'll be able to easily take a look at cards from different sets to figure out where these ones come from and which are replacing but they have for me at least just put these on the back of this particular pack now i don't believe they actually come from this pack but who knows maybe they do so this particular pack i'm really excited to be adding in this druid pack gives you the first steps along the path to becoming a true druid in this land and you get to gain a companion and make use of Fiona, if I'm saying that correctly, within the environment to succeed on your adventure. So that sounds pretty cool. So as soon as I open up the box, this is the character that you can be with this particular pack, or you can be this individual. Pretty cool. We also got ourselves some scenarios here. So a search for new companions, which is exactly what the back of the thing said, or we can go down a particular path. Very cool. And then we've got some cards back here we've got to go through as well that come in this pack. So let's take a closer look at these. We got the Twin Raven Companions. Sounds pretty cool. We can get a cat companion. We got the, ooh, a fancy robe we can potentially have. What is this? A staff? Ooh, it looks like it's an upgraded weapon. That's pretty cool. And then if we flip this over to the opposite side, we've got ourselves, ah, insect's path, teaching, form, blessing, aggressive, powerful. Ah, see, these look similar to that pack that was stuck to the back of the box. So, Pretty sure this is gonna be the ones that they're replacing. So that actually does make a lot more sense now. And then last, but certainly not least, is probably the most exciting one, treasure. Because I mean, who does not like treasure? I wanna find more treasure. Is it a treasure hunter maybe? So foes, loot, strange wells, no adventure is complete without finding loot guarded by the strange and unusual inhabitants of the great sewers and weeping caves. So we're gonna be plumbing the depths to find what we can get from those locations. The treasure pack gives more foes and loot to switch into any 
any adventure. That's cool. So you actually get some foes in here too. And it says at the bottom here, the Great Diversion is a unique location that links together the caves and the sewers and allows you to continue on to the ancient crypts and to the Brethren works. Well, that's interesting. So that's actually a linkage spot between the two different Nova sets. So that's pretty cool. This seems like a really good one to have. So we're gonna go ahead and tear into this and find out what we get. So the first thing I've run into is a scenario here, the deep clearance. That's one of the things that come inside this set. And then we've got the ultra deep clearance. So that could be part of the same thing. We've got the great divergence or diversion, I should say. This is the special card that was mentioned earlier that we could potentially find that could link between the two different worlds. So we'll find out more about that if I ever happen to land that particular location. And then lastly, we have some cards which are supposed to be a mix of some of the item cards, I guess we can get, as well as some enemies, which should be interesting. So we have a wishing well here. We have some slavers, some enemies. We got, oh my gosh, some of these do not look fun. The Mort Lick. I don't really want to be licked by that individual. Rock Hide, that also looks painful. Sh uh, Shiver Shade, this was on the front of the actual packaging. Be oh, look at that, you can get yourself a baby. A baby war, war badger, war radger, war radger. <laughs> Badger. Dice of Ren. Oh, you can actually get the fancy discard to reroll all dice on a non combat test. Nice. You can get that. The Looted Treasure Chest or Ryan's Book of Guesses. Nice. Okay, so those are some items and things we can add into our experience. And that's going to conclude the unboxing for Legends Untold, the Weeping Caves, the Great Sewers, the Treasure Pack, the Druid, and the Alchemist. We covered the whole thing, even the Dragon Dice. And I really hope I was able to show you all the content from the original Kickstarter so that if you're interested in this game and picking it up, whether you find it secondhand from somebody else that you potentially know, or you are part of a recent or upcoming Kickstarter for Legends Untold, that at least you have an idea of what you can expect inside the box. Now, also, in the comments below let me know would you like to see this type of game played on the channel in terms of a showcase where we could kind of go on an adventure together i think this will be a fun one we'll have a lot of interactivity between me and you as we move through the adventure and move through the, either the sewers or the weeping caves and if you want to see an actual playthrough of this one in the near future then let me know which of the two locations you prefer the great sewers or the weeping caves and i'll take that into consideration as i go through the year thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo Thank you